All right, guys, I'm pretty excited to tell you about this new project I've been working on. I'm kind of short on spare time because I'm getting ready for the Maker Fair where I'm going to be displaying some of my computers. So, like, this is kind of off the cuff compared to my usual stuff. Anyway, let's get a look at this TRS-80. So, we set up a bunch of computers at the New Orleans Maker Fair last year, and uh, interestingly enough, four or five people were like, hey, where's your TRS-80? And, I'm, I mean, I was kind of stumped. I didn't know TRS-80s were so popular. Uh, I never had one growing up. I never really saw one working. I mean, I think I saw these things at flea markets in the mid-90s. Like, nobody wanted them for anything. Anyway... It's a pretty cool computer. Uh, it's just, it's cool to me because it's so alien compared to anything that I've ever had before. But uh, I'm gonna show you some of the, the problems that I had with this. So when I first got this thing, I turned it on and the, uh, the screen didn't work. It kind of came up with these green lines. That problem was pretty easy to, to fix. If you look down here, we got these two potentiometers. It's like your brightness and contrast type adjustments. These things just needed cleaned up with some deoxid, ran back and forth a couple times, then adjusted properly. After I did that, my screen, I think I uh, had a vertical hold issue or a horizontal hold issue. Can't remember, but I found an adjustment for that back here on the analog board. Actually used the manual. I, I, I found a service manual that explained how to do that. Once I got it on and could see the display, the, uh, the keyboard, the only key that was responsive to any presses at all was the X key, so it was kind of useless. I couldn't do anything with it. I got into attempting to troubleshoot the keyboard because, you know, I could fix things, but the problem is basically the, the rubber domes inside of these things. The uh, conductive part had broken down, and the the only uh, solution, because they, these switches are proprietary, is to physically remove every single key, desolder them, and then paint some conductive stuff on, put them back together and hope you didn't break any little plastic snaps or anything. So what I did is I just waited for a uh, second keyboard to pop up on eBay because if I'm going to do a repair involving taking a hundred keys out of something, like I need to have some spares at least. So it kind of sat in the closet for a solid six months until this thing popped up. Now when this keyboard came in, uh, I don't have it out right now. I noticed that actually uh, it's a different part number than this one. Now I'll put the part number for this keyboard in the description. Uh, this part number was not on any uh, websites about the TRS-80. And the connector, I had to change out because the uh, the original one, the the ribbon was soldered to the uh, the keyboard. I mean, it, it plugs in on the other side up here, but it was definitely soldered over here. I have a, a co-worker that's really good at cable fabrication. I had him help me out on that. Al, big shout out to Al right here. Check out his YouTube page if you haven't already. Once we got this in, every single key on this keyboard worked except for the space bar. Now the space bar is kind of an important key, but I had a pretty uh, pretty simple solution. What I did is I got my soldering station and I desoldered the number nine here and I replaced it with the space bar. Because I mean, I mean, uh, number nine on the numeric keypad is nice, but you have to have a spacebar to operate the computer. And also, I have a, a second number nine key right up at the top here. I mean, uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for another switch or something, but the keyboard's good for now. Anyway, uh, oh, these are Alps keyboards, if you didn't know, which is interesting. So the second problem I had was once I got the keyboard working and the monitor working, the only disk that I had with this thing... Let me show you this disc that came with this thing. Now, now this was a gift. Someone donated this to me. We're at the Maker Fair after like the third or fourth person asked me about a TRS-80. This one guy was like, oh, you don't have a TRS-80? He showed up 20 minutes later with this thing and just gave it to me, which is awesome. I mean, it's a little bit of a project, but hey, I love uh, free old computers that I could just fix. But uh, here's the disc that came with it. And this thing is salty. It's uh, kind of amazing how bad of a shape it is, but... <laughs> It actually still booted with this. Um, the uh, the disk drives, I'm guessing, are pretty forgiving because the data density is pretty low. I found this awesome website, which I'm going to give this guy a shout out. If you haven't checked it out already, it's it's uh, trs80.com backslash WordPress. This dude named Ira. And if you send him a message, he'll send you a bunch of, like a full set of uh, various TRS-80 DOS disks. And there's some games and programs on here as well. He just asked that you send him a donation in return after you successfully test the disks, which is exactly what I did. 
I got the discs working, I got the keyboard working, and I had the monitor on, which also meant that I had the computer on for a little bit longer than 10 minutes, which is the longest I had ever had it turned on. And, uh, you know, I was kind of waiting for this thing to happen, so I had my, I had my uh, surge suppressor handy. But what happened is I heard the pop, the bang, I saw the smoke. And what it was is these two boards right here, these are the power supply boards. They had these really old caps, which I actually kept one sticker right here. You see that? That's what the pop and sizzle was. These old film caps on here just popped. Uh, one of them burst, and then the ones that didn't burst yet, I got a look in at them, and I mean, they looked in pretty rough shape. But I ordered brand new ones for $4, I think, plus shipping from DigiKey for both boards. And uh, those are pretty easy to solder in with my soldering station. Uh, got those things replaced, and she booted up. Perfect. I pretty much had an almost 100% functional machine except for the latch here on my disk drive was broke. Well, I was uh, I was like, well, what am I going to do? Maybe I can get a broken disk drive and pull the plastic piece off of it. Or maybe I could, you know, make some piece of plastic to fix the part that had broken. Because what had happened was there's a little, uh, there's a hinge in there. And uh, it, it maybe the plastic got brittle and it just broke off. Well, when I went to look at the other disk drive that did work to figure out what was supposed to be in the broken spot, I noticed that someone had epoxied the same thing on the old disk drive at some point in ancient history. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll just uh, break out the epoxy and uh, glue, the, glue the hinge on. Sure enough, it worked. Perfect. So both of my disk drives, my keyboard, my display, and my power supplies are all good. And this thing should be ready to rock and roll at the uh, Maker Fair, and some kids can, you know, try some games out, or maybe they'll dabble into some basic programming. I got this awesome book for this thing. Check it out. I uh, posted a couple pictures of this on my Instagram. If you haven't already checked it out, uh, it's called Simple Things Toys. But the coolest thing in here is, I love this illustration. This dragon with the TRS-80. There's a really good shot of this on my Instagram if you want to grab the picture, if you're like into these TRS-80 computers. But uh, something else I noticed pulling this thing apart is, you know, if you like these things, personally, I mean, good luck if you want to, but I'd be really hesitant about buying one of these things off of eBay because compared to my like IBM PS2s, which are built like tanks, this thing is, is pretty chintzy. The CRT monitor is kind of held in by this plastic retaining device. And, uh, I mean, it just seems like if you flipped it over and banged it on the top, which is what happens a lot of times when things are being shipped, like the weight of the CRT could break. And then uh, the power supply board here, this is <laughs> really chintzy. Um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be somewhere else, maybe up, up here or something, but this power supply board was actually double-sided tape to the bottom of the, the case, which means, to me, if it got whacked, like, it could probably just, you know, fall off and then break the CRT or slam into the caps on the other power supply. It just seems like, you know, real chintzy compared to other stuff. Now, uh, checking these things apart to work on them is a little sketchy too because the, the way the CRT pokes out, see, I can't do this on video at the same time, but like you have to pull this thing out at a very particular angle because if you brush that delicate piece of glass there up against this back part right here or you get it stuck and you apply too much force, you're going to break your CRT. And then you're going to have to, you know, do another repair, which stinks, but anyway. And then, uh, check this thing out. I got this Tandy disc box at a uh, garage sale last year. I hadn't really had a good opportunity to use it for anything yet, but it's a perfect home for my TRS-80 discs. Anyway, uh, I'll probably do another video, like more of a, a detailed video on this thing later, but I just wanted to show you guys where I was on the project. Let me know if you have any more questions about this machine or if there's any specific aspects of it you'd like me to demo. But uh, I'll probably have some other quick update videos as I continue to break some things out of the attic to get ready for this Maker Faire. Because I, I, I want to have a good showing of my vintage computers. I mean, the, the kids that went to this thing last year had a blast just messing with us all, all this stuff. Until next time, kids.